Hey everybody, welcome back to KKG. This is KKG UH here with Gaming Navi, and hey. we have fi and we have finally gotten back to our review series of the Seven Circles of Sandler. Yep, we've had to change bad writing. Oh, the, the cliche plot just writing now because um, we our movie this week was Fifty First Dates, and not only were there Fifty First Dates, there were fifty good and fifty bad moments of this movie. Very half and half. Some moments were so cringe we had to change. From, and from cliche writing to just writing in general. Yeah, we thought about that during the view. We thought about that during our screening of Fifty First Dates, and yeah, instead of just cliche plots, we decided to just put it as writing as a because whole. Because some of the writing in this movie was bad enough. Quentin and I had to. Oh, that it was painful. It. I remember watching this movie twice with my dad, and it wasn't really that bad, but. After seeing it this third time, however, I Opinions got changed. really yeah. The 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 moments where sh where sh Sandler tried wooing Drew Barrymore's character at the beginning was really stupid and cringeworthy. Uh, I, in fact, I've never seen like the one with him pretending he can't read. That was so stupid. There were some really dumb scenes in there. And, but at the same time, though, there were just as many good scenes. Like, it was really sweet to just see all, like, the successful attempts and, like, everything that happened afterwards. Like, the videotape and all that stuff. Like, a lot of those scenes were really good, too. Yeah. And so, for every good, there's also a bad. This movie is definitely one of his good films, but it's also... At the same time, I'd also say one of his most flawed. It's, like, this movie's a paradox. It's both good and equally bad, I guess. It hurts to say that. Yeah, honestly, that does speak a lot of truth. Because I did really enjoy the heartfelt moments when I saw this, mm -hmm. but a lot of the very offensive moments, a, a la Rob Schneider, the walrus... Um, well, not so much the walrus, but a lot of the, you know, a lot of the stated faults that we're going to come up with in a bit. Yeah. Not come up with a bit, but talk about. And that brings us to our seven circles of Sandler for yep. this movie. First, we have celebrity cameos at one because... Dan Aykroyd. It's just Dan Aykroyd playing a doctor, which was very hard for us to legitimately define, but at the same time... The Doctor kind of serves little purpose, I guess. Yeah, to just being there and telling about the dis about the syndrome that Barrymore has. Yeah, and that's really it. Just, just Yeah, he was just there most of the time. He didn't play a bad Doctor, don't get me wrong. No, his, yeah. His Ghostbusters genius still carried over long enough to justify him, but at the same time, it also... He wasn't... Like, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, that's kind of more like, like they were. They had him for the movie, and like, okay, well, we're gonna use him for a few more scenes. You know, we have access to him. Uh, then we have writing at level two because yeah, the half script. the movie was good, the other half was bad, and we also come up came up with some just little flaws. So let's get down to the premise, which we forgot to do. Uh, yeah. This movie is about Drew Barrymore playing a girl who has short term memory loss. After every day, she seems to forget everything. And Sandler plays a guy who likes to have one-night flings with girls on vacation and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, girl who can't remember the next day, guy who only does one-night flings, seems to be a match made in heaven, right? <laughs> well, it's very hard for them to keep doing it. So he has to keep making up new ways for him to meet her, which leads to some very cringy scenes. Yeah, that's and where it's her, the most severe. And her family, uh, to try and protect her, they basically okay. they try and recreate the same day for her over and over again. So that way she doesn't suspect that she's going through an injury. Yeah, and that's really harsh too because they have to build all these, you know, build a whole, you know, bunch of lies for her just yeah. so that. She and that's why it's sad and tragic. It's also confusing because it makes you wonder what something that they couldn't control happens. Like at one point in the movie, she gets a ticket because her license plate's outdated now. And she doesn't know why. You'd think he would have planned for this. No, that was definitely not well plot out movie-wise. Yeah, we just wondered, what if there are other things he couldn't have controlled? Like, how many times has this happened? They imply that it has happened, but we don't know how many times that is. 
So, so there's basically there's a huge amount of plot holes coming out of the premise at the same time. Like, like as they go along. It's a good premise. Don't get me wrong. I, I agree. love it, but it's also equally confusing. Yeah. Because it raises just enough questions at the same time to ask, well, what about this scenario or what about this potential factor? What if this? What if that happened? Yeah, just a bunch of what ifs. And we don't hate the movie. There no, are a we few don't. scenes that we do hate, but we can't say it's entirely bad. No, that's it's not really fair to say that it's bad. I mean, I, I agree the script is awful, but at the same time, there was definitely a lot of enjoyment between Sandler and Barrymore. Yeah, as they their grow, chemistry is still amazing in this movie, and probably the best screen on screen chemistry that Sandler might ever have. I'm just gonna say that right now. Yeah. Anyways, so next uh, up is the uh, the worst one of them all. Lowbrow humor. Jeez Louise. Every bad scene just suffers from this, and I, I freaking hate it. It makes me sad. And we start off with a, we, with uh, one of the walruses, the main, main walrus being sick. And Jocko. Jocko, thank you. And so he recruits and that German... barfing on the, I think, Russian girl. I think was it's Russian? Po- I think it's supposed to be Russian, because they keep doing, like, the stereotype Russian accent. And, and I have jive. Been, I yeah. will go into your room. And become naked. naked. And become naked. Yeah, and there's another question behind that as well. Oh, Dyer, yeah, there's the Dyer game gal. Man. There's the gay man who dresses like a woman. <sighs> oh, Lord, that scene. Hold on, where'd my phone go? Wait. Is Richard here? Hold on. Oh, yeah, one time. Richard, Richard's coming in for the review. Yay! Hold on. Brunton, you take over the review. I'll be back. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was completely oh. unexpected. But yeah, I'm just going to say... He's Rob- outside. I forgot. I'm going to need my mouth yeah. too. No, it's okay. <laughs> I was just pausing the, the game. Welcome to Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. Sorry, that was completely unexpected. So, on the subject of the... St- so, yes. Lowbrow humor. Ugh. Yeah, this this movie is just really like this movie's lowbrow humor. All the bad scenes that we expected from watching this all were all centered around the lowbrow humor. First, we had Sandler recruiting that Russian stereotype to hear this walrus <laughs> to uh, heal one of the walruses, and he ends up barfing all over the girl. And then we we actually had subtitles on to see this, but we've noticed that she talks in a very stereotypical. I, I don't want to say jive. I want to say it's more, you know, broke, like, sort of grammatics in English. But, yeah, that, that one was just kind of ugly. Not not in my first appearance, but just how very stereotypical that looked. And then, naturally, the worst form... Oh, wait, no, 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 we're not doing stereotypes yet. So how do I say this? The humor was lowbrow in terms of just the vomiting, and then there's the sexual stuff, like Rob Schneider touching his nipples. I mean, I don't think we really needed to see that. And he just kept going along with it, too. Now, where was I going to go with this? So yeah, well, since we're on the topic of Rob Schneider, I might as well talk about, I might as well discuss Rob Schneider. I mean, that just sounded really weird. What I meant to say was, since we're on the topic of Rob Schneider, I might as well mention the next circle, stereotypes. Naturally, the late, the Russian lady was a mix between lowbrow humor and stereotypes at the same time, unfortunately. Rob Schneider played a Samoan stereotype, which I really don't approve of but and now he's back but richard i kidnapped richard guys it's all right <laughs> hey their view can go on so i was just telling the audience about i was just wrapping up the lowbrow points and then tying into the uh, stereotype circle because it has to do with rob schneider and that russian lady. oh yeah Ro- rob schneider plays a samoan man in this movie and let's just say uh subtlety is not his last name nope. nor is it his middle name or part of his dna but I was just telling them that uh, both the stereotypes, and, like both the lowbrow humor and the stereotypes, tie into both of these characters in one scene as well. There's also a weird recurring joke of him not being happy with his marriage. I 
don't. Yeah. I get the joke. I guess the joke is that uh, it's a romance movie, so Thro- just throw something in there and hope it sticks. I guess that's the joke. The idea of it, no, but it just doesn't make. S- no, it's- that is a very common thing to see in Sandler's movie nowadays. Like, if for any attempts at laughs or having something stick, they'll just throw shit at a wall and you know hope it'll stay on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like any unfunny and any unfunny joke just does not go untouched. It has to be repeated a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. How about you, Richard? Have you seen Fifty First Dates before? Mm, once. Okay, so from your recollection, what do you remember of it? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. I, I don't think I could remember really that much. Okay. Do you remember the premise? Yeah, it's something about the how how the the, the, the main female lead. Uh, Drew Barrymore. Like, Drew, Drew, Drew Barrymore has, like, amnesia or something like that, and yeah. she cannot remember anything, so they kind of repeat it. Her family repeats, like, the same schedule for yep. one week for, like, infinitum. Yep. yep. Yeah. Not just the same week, it's the same day. Yeah. yeah. To her, it's October 17th, a Sunday, every day. Yeah. Yeah, they have to set, like, because Jesus. she forgets... Because she forgets every single no- the moment she falls asleep, she'll forget everything the next day. So they have to keep setting him up. Yeah. yeah. In order, in order for her, to, in order to hide the truth that she has this condition. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's really sad. And we have some very stereotypical roles from Adam. Uh, did I Rob. Say Adam? I meant Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider is pretty. Come, I mean, coming yeah. when it's Rob Schneider in a Sandler film, you kind of have to expect that at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Like I got sixty nine. That's a romance movie. Wow. <laughs> Peachy. So, so <laughs> I mean, it's not Russian. stereotypes, Rush- and yeah, the Russian girl stereotype is horrible. That the Russian really guy bad. transvestite. Dude. Yeah. we was uh, bad. When we first saw that Yikes. in our screening, we were not sure whether that was a guy or a gal. But yeah, until it, yes. it was all because of. I'm convinced that it's actually supposed to be a girl, and it just. Sandler makes joke. Sandler has to tell us that that's a guy. That's. That's really bad. That's that's uh, that doesn't hold up well in today's society. Yeah. So I wouldn't really say that dates the film. It's just more of an out, like a really bad stereotype. Really bad stereotype. It's horrible. And we have those. You know, they were just bad enough, especially since they're both recurring characters. It's not like uh, Rob Schneider's character in Waterboy, who just shows up for like one, maybe two scenes. Yeah, this he's one there is just different because he's there everywhere. Same with the Russian transvestite. It is fucking weird. Horrible. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, I feel like that was implied considering what we were talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, long story short, it's not that their characters weren't good, but. Very stereotypical. At the very least. There wasn't any punching yeah. down or product placement. No, there wasn't. Yeah, and that actually goes into the That's next two points because, yeah. I mean, the most there is is one scene of Re- of Adam Sandler saying for breakfast he had Reese's peanut butter cups and Gatorade, and for this movie, one of the guys at a breakfast bar just refers to him as uh, peanut butter cup, and that's it. Yeah. There's no Gatorade everywhere else in the movie. There's no product placement for like a phone. There's not even a logo. Or a car. It's just. It's a fling. It's, it's a, a joke fling. <laughs> it's just a joke of them referring to him as peanut butter cup because he had breakfast. For a peanut butter cups once and you know later they buy him a box of that but i mean that's it it's not like that's a like it's everywhere it's just like a joke one the guy yeah. says to the other guy and it's not your that's face. it it's not product placement no nope. how is is that possible you can't get those coins yeah <laughs> it's not but yeah um this looks interesting yeah it's uh Mario Luigi uh, Cola Land Quest, I think that's what it was called. Mm. That's the hack we're playing today, guys, for you guys. Yeah, just to fit the tropical theme for uh, 50 just cause first the first few, because the first few levels were all tropical themed, so I thought, cool. okay, this this will work. All right, yeah. So that pretty much sums up all the so that pretty much sums up all the circles. But is there really anything more we can talk about for Fifty First Dates? Like, should we conclude? I loved how it ended, though, because they do come with terms that. She's not gonna get better, but they do find a way to live with it. Yeah, they work Which I around think is it. a more powerful ending than if they just said, Oh, look, she she remembers. She just woke up and was like, Oh my goodness, I remember all these days I had with this amazing man. Is he looked like Adam Sandler. Just, they didn't go, Hey, here's a cop out ending, here's a good ending. Yeah, they actually built around the situation more and made and it a lot less. And they some ideas and provide answers on how they lived with 
how they how Sandler lives with it. Now they could have just crapped out and been like, but they didn't. Sandler comes back and then she's like, I remember you. Remember all those nights. I remember all those first kisses. She, they could have done that, but they didn't. And I really respect and love their decision that for not doing that. I it would have just been so easy for them to do that, to act, just crap out and be like, yeah, here's a cliche ending, guys. Hope you enjoy it. But they didn't. Yeah, that's actually something they do for a lot of the rest of the films now. But this film actually stood out. They they decided they wanted to make a difference in the ending, and they wanted to leave an impact on the audience, and they did. And I think that's really something to be no to you know take in note for Sandler's films. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be one of his best films so far. Yep. Something Quentin and I joked about before outside of this was that this movie is kind of like a coin. Half it of it is good. The other half is garbage. So basically, Fifty First Dates is a 50-50. Yep. That was a very corny joke, but you know what? It's better than some of his most cringy scenes in the movie. Oh, yeah. Actually, no correction, no better word that it's better than some of his least cringy scenes. That stands out more. Yeah. But yeah, I've honestly never seen you have to leave a scene so much than this movie. Yeah, there were some scenes in there I had to leave because they were just that bad. I mean, Rob Schneider touching his nipples or coconuts like that in the scene, though, I don't think we needed to see that. <laughs> no, it's weird to look at Richard's reactions to what we're describing. Because <laughs> he's wondering, like, what kind of, I don't remember that scene. <laughs> Your face just kind of spells out, Richard. It's like, I don't remember that happening. <sighs> Sorry, I just mentally preparing for work. Yeah. Oh. My so God. Great movie. So it's a good movie for what it is. I appreciate all the efforts that were put into it, and I well, think we it have stands... some problems with it. We do. The script is bad, but it does create a, establish uh, a great on-screen chemistry half relationship. Half with... the script is bad because yeah. when it gets to the soft moments, it's good. Yeah, that's what I was trying to build at. Well, it's, well, you just said the script is bad. That's not like a too general statement. It's supposed to cutting out. It's supposed to excluding certain scenes. Yeah. So that is it. Is that was Fifty First Dates. And since we're entering October, we are act for our next our uh, for our next uh, Seven Circles of Sandler. We were thinking of doing the Hotel Transylvania films to fit the holiday. And that's me. What? And then we'll do a horrifying movie of true horror. Don't, don't mess, mess with, with the Zohan. Zohan. Oh, Uncut edition. Oh no. Dun 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 dun. This is gonna suck. I oh, my cannot tell it's back. <laughs> Oh boy, this is gonna hurt, but we have to sit through the Hotel Transylvania films first. Yep. How oh, scary. Don't worry, guys. You'll get to see us suffer soon, even more than we just did. Yep. So in the meantime, stay tuned on our channels, and we will see you next time. Yeet!